I would like to introduce uh, Leonardo to you all. I, I don't know all the people at the back may have flown you forward, but you're a bit spread out. Just yourselves. You don't see your comfort with the grant. Um, Leonardo is a consultant on Scrum Master in Mass Car in Dublin. And after working as a software development manager in Brazil, he moved to Ireland as a technology consultant and Scrum Master first at Bearing Point and then at Ecofax. He focuses on building high performance, agile, and lean development teams. Today, Leonardo will discuss with us some challenges moving from a plan to a sprint goal and will share some tips and tricks they developed along the way. So, thank you. Over to you. Hello, hello. Can you hear me? Well, yeah. Yeah. Can you hear me? Okay, so welcome to my session today. Uh, thanks for the kind introduction. My name is Leonardo, and uh, today I'm here. I'd like to share with you some experience that I had uh, with a previous team that I was working with when we started adopting uh, sprint goals, more specifically. How many of you here are familiar with Scrum? Can you raise your hands? And the terminology, not the naming. Uh, sprint backlog. Does everyone know what sprint backlog means? Okay, because I'm going to focus a lot in sprint backlog and sprint goals. But before we start talking about deep in, in the, this uh, experience that I would like to share, I would like to give you the first goal. The first goal here is you have to make a change in one of your colleagues. It, has, it can be a very small change, but you have to make a change in someone else in 20 seconds or 30 seconds in max. Make someone to change something on them. 30 seconds, you got it, the idea? Make someone to change something. On, it can be, a, I don't know, a gadget or something like that. Make someone to change something. Is that okay? 30 seconds. Come on, guys. The energy that Paul mentioned. 30 seconds, just make someone to change something. It can be a little small thing. <laughs> okay. Did we change something in someone else? Was it easy? Okay, so the second activity that I'd like to play with you, uh, there are some pieces of paper on your tables, and there are three groups with different instructions. I would like to, to just pick one of them the piece of paper there and uh, just execute the instructions. We're going to have two minutes to run to execute whatever is written on the paper. So there are three, three types of groups with different things to do. So it's two minutes max from now. So possibly you have to stand up and find someone else in a different table. Just go for it. It's just one piece. You should Pick one piece, just one, uh, one piece of paper, just one piece, and then go for it. It's just two minutes, so it's going to be a very stretch goal. That's all right. Okay, so just hold where we are. There's no problem. We're going to continue on later on. So, basically, what happened now? Just to be, uh, 
to clarify it to everyone. We had three groups here, starting with the group two. So the group two had instruction to build a paper airplane that can fly at least four meters. How many of you could finish in two minutes this? Were you able to finish, or is there anyone that didn't finish from, from this group? Was it easy? You, you knew how to do it, how to build? Right, great. The other group, the group one, they uh, had to find someone with a blank piece of paper and tell them how to build a paper airplane with these detailed instructions. How did it go? Tell me about your feelings. Maybe the one with the piece, uh, the blank sheet of paper that just start uh, receiving instructions and had just to execute that. How did you feel? Showing this is what your requirement is all about. Yes, no requirement. Yeah. So, what we were having here. So, one group had a clear vision for it. This a clear that uh, vision of what we want to achieve. So, just let's build a paper airplane that can fly at least four meters. We don't know yet if it's going to fly four meters. We're going to do it later on. <laughs> uh, however, the other group group was just following instructions, following a plan. By the way, didn't you know how to build a paper airplane for those who were following instructions? No? Yes? So you had skills to build, I believe that you had skills to build, but someone was telling you how to do it, right? And this is what we are bringing to our teams. And this comes from the time don't bother here, it was supposed to be uh, a Ford's uh, company, but <laughs> for some reason I got a wrong image and it's a shoes factory. But to bring this as a, uh, whenever the Ford was uh, building cars, uh, they had a lot of demand during that uh, industrial revolution. And uh, for example, in Michigan, they had around 7,000 7, employees speaking 50 plus languages. So it was very hard to communicate and they had to speed up their uh, production. Then one guy called Frederick Taylor came into the scenes and he came up with the idea of called scientific management. And what does it mean? Basically, he got a bunch of engineers, very skilled, skilled engineers, and uh, they had to break down the problem, which was how to build a car, in smaller pieces and define how to do that piece. And then go to the workers and literally tell them you have to do this like this. So they could produce more cars. However, we are bringing, we are carrying over this mindset to our teams. But the difference is that the works in the past are, are, are our engineers right now. They usually are skilled, they have communication skills and so on, and we work with the creative work. It's not just a, a labor. We work with creativity. So that's, I would like to bring today how we can do with our teams and uh, get all the benefits that the developers and the teams that we have can bring to a solutions, solutions that we build. And then uh, just one analogy before we start going deeper in the, the, the experience that I had. Usually I uh, use this. Uh, let's suppose that we are in front of a mountain today, this is a knowledge, uh, and we want to be on the top of that mountain by the end of the day. We are a group of people and we have a challenge today and we want to be on the top of that mountain by the end of today. So we get together and we say, mm, okay, let's trace a plan here. So we believe that we can follow this path, go to that way, there are some trees over there, we can see what's behind, but okay, we can see the rest of the way up there. And we, we just pretty much craft a plan. And we believe that we're gonna achieve that in three or four hours. Whenever we start walking up, I don't know, whenever we cross those trees, suddenly we realize that there's a lake now in front of us. Or there's a better path to go up to the mountain. What would we do? Would we keep following our initial plan or would we adapt and achieve the goal that we were aiming to. So why don't we do this 
within our sprints. Usually we see a lot of people talking about committing to the sprint backlog. When we commit to the sprint backlog, we are committing to this plan. And if we find a lake in front of us, no, no, keep going, keep going, don't care. This is you committed to. So the goal is important. What you want to achieve. It's much more customer value focused. And that's what I would like to talk to you today. So before we start the case, just differentiating the sprint goal and this backlog. The goal will tell us what we want to achieve. And the sprint backlog is our plan how we intend to achieve that goal. So we commit to the sprint goal. When we talk about commitment, it should be the sprint goal. And this is the plan that we're going to use. Uh, Paul just used on the opening uh, session that successful people, they know what they want, but they know that's not a straight line. They adapt to achieve that goal. It's the same mindset, same principle in here. So we commit to the goal, but we, uh, we have a plan that we intend to use to achieve that. That's the main differentiation that we should have within our sprints. Uh, so I would like to give a bit of the context uh, today. I was working with a team, in a team, I just joined that team, and uh, the team was distributed, and we had some challenges when we, we have distributed teams. I'm not saying that it's impossible to work with distributed teams. It's very good, we can have very good outcomes, but we have some challenges. Uh, the, the development team, the Scrum team, was fully co-located, but our product manager, the guy who was driving uh, the product, was uh, in the US, and plus some architects and subject matters experts. So they were not fully co-located. So there is this first barrier that we had to overcome. Uh, the, the product manager was very focused on plan, so when we were having our release plans and the sprint, plan, sprint planning and also the sprint review, it was very focused on the plan, say, oh, so you are committing to deliver this bunch of stories. Uh, and during the sprint review, why didn't you deliver the, the, those stories? You committed to, so you should have delivered that. And it was very focused on the plan, but not only what we want to achieve, the, the value that we would like to bring to our customers. This, of course, it was a kind of micromanagement. Uh, I have to be honest with you, it wasn't like extremely uh, done, but it was mainly on the sprint planning, uh, sprint review, and during the reason plans. Those kind of micromanagement would happen. The team became very defensive. So that guy's coming and he's gonna put pressure on us and he's gonna scrutinize us. So that was just feeling of it our team and them. We were not a product delivery team. That was not the mindset at that moment. Um, of course, this brings a low morale, so the team doesn't collaborate. It's not good. Uh, we, don't, we didn't have many, but a few people left uh, due to this uh, environment. And as a school master, I was thinking, so how could I help here? What could I do to, uh, to change the situation? And uh, I was still studying for some of the certifications that I did with Scrum, and I read about Scrum goals, uh, sorry, sprint goals. Uh, I said, hmm, this can be, is something that we are not using. This can be something that will give vision to the team, will, will help us out to focus on our purpose, rather than just follow, in follow instruction. And then I said, hmm, that's the solution. Let's move to those, all right? And what I did, I just brought the idea and I started trying to sell it to people. So let's use goals. That's going to be nice. It's going to work and we're going to have good outcomes in here. And guess what? I failed. How many of you here that uh, were changed by one of our colleagues rolled back the change? Or do you still keep the change that it, it happened at the beginning 15 minutes ago? Do you still have it? One? Do you have more people that kept the change? Or just revert it back? 15 minutes. You try to change someone else, and in 15 minutes, it's back. So, that's what I tried. I tried to change people, and it didn't work. 
and that's what we tried the most. Uh, at the beginning, I tried a lot changing people, and it isn't, didn't uh, show being effective. And uh, I was reading about uh, general uh, theory, well, general, general system theory, and it says that whenever we change the environment, the agents within this environment will adapt to it. We are here in the environment, in a context. Let's suppose we provoke a change in here. We make a change. We just remove all the chairs here, and we bring people in, some people out. The dynamic, the dynamic among us will change. And everyone here in this room will adapt to it. That's what happened. And so that's what I tried to do. I just found this template. It's from Roman, Roman Pickler. He is a very known guy on product development. And he came up with this template to help us out to craft our sprint goals. Just going through the, the template, what is it? So first, we should specify our goal, which is why we are carrying out this sprint. What we want to achieve in the next, usually two weeks or three or four weeks, within this sprint, within with this iteration. Why or what we want. But this may not be enough. We have also to uh, define which way we're going to use to uh, check whether we achieved or not. And it's also important to define the metrics. And we're going to compare to that. We're going to use this other goal. We're going to use two way, the, this way, to compare with these metrics, and then we assess whether we achieved or not. It's not just one person saying yes, Users are accepted or this feature is accepted. We find uh, something that is measurable and is specific. And this will help our result with our teams. Uh, okay, but still I'm trying to change the way we are, we, we are working. But rather than to bring this and start explaining to the team, uh, I use a different approach. I will just let them keep doing the way that we were doing the sprint plannings. However, at the end of the sprint planning, I was bringing this template. And I was asking to the team, say, look, what, 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 what we are trying to achieve here? What is our goal for the next two weeks? The product manager was in that meeting as well. Uh, what we are trying to achieve here? And then we start having this conversation time to time. And they were coming with the idea, oh, so yeah, our goal for the next two weeks is to have this, or to delete this, or finish this feature or answer this question. So the first approach that I tried was, whenever the user stories were in the, our sprint backlog, I would bring the template and then we ask the questions and together try to fill in that template. And not only that, I would bring that template, well, the, the things that the template filled out into the sprint review. And the first thing that I would do in the sprint review was to go through that. So our goal for our sprint was this, we're going to use it this way to validate, and those are the metrics that will help us to uh, define whether we achieve it or not. Okay? And the approach from the product manager starts to change because he saw that, hmm, do we need to care about how we are doing things? Because I know what I'm going to get at the beginning of the sprint, I'm going to go, I'm going to know what I'm going to get at the end. So I just need to focus on defining what. And he started changing his approach. And this left more room for the team to bring the ideas and how to find how to do things. Like building the paper at a plane. If you have skills, you, you could even give more better advice on how to build one that can fly 10 meters. But if, if you are following instruction, instructions that from someone telling you and not giving any feedback or you don't have any room to give your opinion, we are just following rules. We can create better products when we have, I call this, uh, collective intelligence running within our teams. Uh, the more we get experience in this, at some point, where our product owner will come up with an idea of a uh, goal, a sprint goal. The more exercise that and the more that he sees value on this, at some point he will come up with a new one. I think for this sprint we could answer we could check whether our architecture will cope with the amount of users that we are expecting in the next month. So things like that. This conversation will happen. 
Um, so I'd like to give some examples then. A simple one that, for example, we, can, we, we want to finish the feature act for the release. Can be an example of both. Or perhaps if we have an assumption, a hypothesis that we want to validate, it's also in sprint go. We want to test, perhaps we, can, we want to pair some discovery here within this sprint to know if our users want to register before using the feature act. We can do this. It's an answer, it's measurable, and it's specific. So we can assess at the end of the sprint whether we achieve it or not. Uh, I just mentioned the architecture. Perhaps we have to check and do some uh, performance tests and see if our current architecture infrastructure copes with the amount of uh, the volume of people that we're expecting next month or something like that. And improve the welcome page and complete all the seven user stories that we put. We agree with all of those goals. They are measurable and they are specific. Yes, no? Do I agree with them all? Who doesn't agree with them all? Why? Exactly. How do I know whether I achieve it or not? Yeah. You don't know. And what is improve? For this problem, improve is one thing, for you it's different. It's, are we talking about performance? Are we talking about usability? Why? What? And what about the last one? Complete the seven user stories that we have in the sprint platform. What is the definition of that? Sorry? What, what do you mean by the definition of complete? Just to develop. Develop those seven user stories is our goal for this sprint. It, it's just a, a proxy for the sprint yeah. backlog. It's a proxy for the goal. If you want to finish this, yeah. it's the same thing to say, okay, we are following our path up to the mountain and we found up a lake and we're going to keep doing the same plan. Because this is the plan. The stories or the, the tickets or uh, items that we have from our backlog are part of our plan. Okay? Uh, just uh, some uh, quickly, some advice in terms of. You follow me? Technical problem. Oops. So we can reward things. For example, rather than to improve performance, we can be more specific. I'll keep going and <laughs> so you can see. So rather than saying improve performance, we could do be more specific saying we want to increase the payload by X percent, something measurable. Have you, have you heard about smart goals? Yeah. They're becoming quite common. So it's specific, measurable, attainable, uh, relevant, and uh, time bounded. Uh, is it coming? Oh, no, time bounded. Uh, so if we have more of those items, the better. But I would say that at least it should be measurable and it should be uh, specific for this sprint goals. And here I have more examples of rather than onboarding on segment market, be specific in terms of which segment for which service or feature that you want, or rather than enhancing some functionality, be specific in which functionality with which market sector. Something that we can you can assess by the end of your sprint. Technical problem. So just just uh, two examples. Rather than being more generic here, be more uh, specific and something that we can measure. Okay. Um, some of the challenges that we faced uh, when adopting sprint goals. The first one was to have one sprint goal only. That was very hard. So we were looking at our sprint backlog, and we could see more than one sprint goal. And uh, we could, at the beginning, we, we cared having two sprint goals. What we did, we defined a primary goal and then a secondary goal. So we would aim to achieve the first one, and then, if possible, to achieve the second one. Not ideal at all, because it doesn't help us to give focus, to have focus, right? But this was a good hint for us to start some discussions. Perhaps we have too many work in progress. We are working too many things at the same time. Uh, another tip here is, if you have some 
I would call items or product by product items that are not really related to the goal, that's all right. That's no problem. If I have a D effect or a story that not correlates or relates back to the goal, that's all right. The problem is if you have half of your backlog that's not linked to the goal, or perhaps we're working too many things at the same time. Uh, vague goals are just covered. We had some case leading proof. Well, one case was an extent I will print it that we had. And when we reached our sprint that I revealed, we couldn't know whether we achieved that or not. Um, one other thing is, this is more specific, specific for the team. Um, sorry. Uh, we were crafting our goal at the beginning, sprint planning, and using this during sprint review. But throughout the sprint, we were missing that. I, I was printing this out and it sticked on our board, but it doesn't mean that it's going to work. So my approach was, whenever we were having our daily scrum, I was asking the question. I didn't even, nobody there wanted to know what we did yesterday, what we're gonna do today. So the question that we were, we were asking or trying to answer is, what I did yesterday that helped us out to achieve our goal, and what I intend to do today that will help to achieve the goal. So what I would ask for them is, okay, this is our plan in front of us, our board, how are we getting on towards our goal? Is this, uh, is this bringing like reality in terms of where we stand towards our goal? Do we need to adapt it? Do we need to have some conversations? Or do you remember the lake? There's, is there a lake in front of us? Or is there a bad path that we can achieve our goal? And this kind of conversation should be, or was being kicked off. And the team start talking to the product manager and having these conversations with him. And I lost my slide. Sorry about that. Um, so it's not just a matter to stick on the wall. It, it won't work. Remember the change that we just revert back? The same thing. People will keep them doing the same thing that they are doing. So as a scrum master or a product manager, start asking the question, how are we getting on towards our goal? If this is our plan, are we going to meet our goal towards the end of the sprint? It's much more focused on value than on plan. And uh, finally, it takes time. It really takes time. It's not something that you can you get right at the beginning. It's like going to the gym. It's something that you, you have to work out, and it takes time until people understand the dynamics and see value on that. So keep doing it. In terms of the benefits, uh, our daily scrum became very more productive. So we were having discussions towards a goal. The team knew what they needed to achieve. So they were having conversations in terms of yeah, what we need to do or we can do this better or perhaps we can remove now this story because it's not valid anymore because we found a better way to do that. Things like that. And they would engage with the product manager uh, to have those decisions. So one thing that we have that uh, when I brought into the, the context, we against them, we start breaking that barrier. So we start having conversation and they were not coming to me to talk to the product manager. They were going and talk to him. So really having a product-based team. Our sprint review became also more productive. It wasn't a demo only, just demo. So we were having conversations focused on customer value, what we were trying to deliver, and the team was bringing ideas to the next iteration, how we could do things better. Uh, also focus, that was very important because um, uh, we were, every conversation that we were doing, having in refinements and so on, whenever we had to make a decision, we were linking back to the goal. Is, is this aligned with our goal or it doesn't align with our goal? That helped us as well, as well to have focus. Collaboration, I just mentioned. Uh, motivation, so the, the team start, the scrum team start having a feeling that they, they, they own their destiny and they could contribute some for something bigger to the product. Uh, also this flexibility to find a better path to the top of the mountain or to overcome some barriers. So we had this flexibility and the product manager was having this flexibility as well because he was seeing value on that. And we talk about a lot about self-organized teams. And that's what we, we were aiming for. So the team was self-organized to get things done. Uh, sorry. The next steps, just for those who would like, this is not the end stage. I was working at Sprint Goal with the team, but there are, there are way more things to align up to the 
vision, the company vision. It should be top down, not always happen. So I was trying to link bottom up. So after working with sprint goals, I would try to uh, have release goals. Unfortunately, I left that organization. I'm not there anymore, but I hopefully they kept doing and following uh, this path. For those who would like to read more about that, I do advise to go to Roman's particular uh, blog and read more about that. He, he is definitely uh, a guy to read about uh, goals and print goals, release goals, and so on. Uh, going to the final message that I would like to give to you today. If you don't know where you're going to, you're going to end somewhere in some more, someplace else. So if you don't know that you want to go to top of that mountain, you're going to end up somewhere else. So it's important to have a clear vision. Purpose. That's the word. Purpose. One thing that I keep saying in many conversations that I have, don't manage, don't manage the people, manage the environment and let them to adapt to it. It's easier. Tweak the environment, bring new tools, bring new ways of doing things. If you are using Scrum, try to bring a different approach to your retrospective. Try to bring a different format to your sprint planning. Do something different, but it's much more effective than changing people's habits. We just, we just seen here. So tweak your environment and see how people adapt to it and keep tweaking your environment. That's what I try to do the most, it seems. And finally, for those who haven't read, uh, read this book, Drive, I do advise to read this book. It's about motivation, and it fits a lot with what I'm talking here. So sprint goals will help us out to give purpose to the team, along with the product vision and so on. I'm pretty sure that most of our teams nowadays, they have, they are, they have skills, they are very skilled, so they know how to do things. Just let them to do the job. So tell them what to do and let them to do the job. What I just mentioned, and I do believe the collective intelligence that we have within our teams is extremely powerful, and you can admire the outcomes that can get out of that. And just going to the final. Now going back to our, uh, yeah, wait. I'm your stakeholder, right? And we have a product, which is our pin answer. Your pin answer is a product for feedback, okay? So, and you are building this, and what I would like you now is to do is, we are doing the PM70 sprint, we're gonna build a paper airplane. However, I would like in this, that in this paper airplane, there should be some kind of feedback from the session. It can be a smile face, a sad face, a word, or something that would give some feedback to me, perhaps to the next time improve this session. So what I will ask to you is to build the paper airplane with some kind of feedback. We're going to have a product demo to see whether uh, our uh, uh, from works or not, and the metric we're going to use, the paper airplane has to reach at least 4 meters, perhaps I should have increased the meters here because we have people far behind, uh, and then at the end, all together, we, we're going to test all the products in a minute or less, okay? So some kind of feedback, build a paper airplane, and then we're going to test if whether it's going to fly 4 meters or not. So. Come on, hurry up, people. Whenever you finish, don't throw it yet. Just raise, raise the... Yeah, so we know that we are finishing. Whenever you finish, just... Finished? You can see? So let's stand up. So we can go, you know. And, and, and the feedback, now you have to deliver your products to your customer, and I'm your customer. Whenever I can't count up to three, you just throw all together towards me. Is that okay? One, two, three. Come on. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. I'm not sure if we have time for questions or so. That's it. Thanks a lot. <laughs>